to glam how many episode 23 23, i believe yes we're coming at you live in hd today yes we have new lighting in here um it feels like a real studio if you don't have it made the jump over to youtube like i can't stress it enough i feel like it's a premium experience and of course like it's not available to all of you like people who are commuting etc but like it's a good experience it's a good experience if you're not commuting commuting if you're not commuting and stuff and such well, as yeah and such as and so forth going on um we, we need to talk about our drama of um uh, grits to glam because i've been informed that i've been sitting on the wrong side um patricia likes the what i the, like this side because if i sit on that side this side of my face it just there's just no jawline when I talk to that way. And we've always sat, like I've always sat on this side. He sat on this side, but then somewhere along the way, Tristan started sitting on this. I think it's when we moved from the like other setup to this setup on the couch. And I don't know why, but now that I'm talking and the mic stands over here, it just feels so much more natural. And like it really worked out because like we both like the sides better. Like I like this side and you like that side. And I just like didn't say anything to Tristan because I thought he just... She thought I was just like, yep, sorry, bitch. This is how it goes. I was like, if he likes that side, that's fine. I'll deal with it. I'll just talk to the camera more, you know, try to. No, I had no clue. So thank you for letting me know. You're welcome. So that's why we're different sides. Well, I mean, probably (laughs) it won't even look like that because like I'm normally on the right side, apparently, but I've just been sitting over here like a monster and stealing stealing the spot but it's okay we got it figured out we got it figured out we got it figured out well we are sorry we missed last week's episode it was one hell of a week to say the least we were in turmoil like well by we we, i mean not me like (laughs) you and matt (laughs) mainly matt we had these perfect plans we went and saw an early screening of don't worry darling i was leaving for alabama that next morning wednesday morning um we were gonna go see the the film come straight home we were gonna record the episode because we wanted to give you all the full experience of the movie, whatever. We didn't want to do it before. And we were, like, both shaking. Like, the the film was crazy. Oh, yes. We'll way. get into we'll that. Get, yeah, we'll talk to that And later. all hell breaks loose. Um, so, obviously, as you know, we did not have a podcast. Um, I think if you follow our Instagram, you probably saw where I was in the hospital pulling an all-nighter with my boyfriend, who I thought just was having, you know, stomach issues by not eating and only eating popcorn for dinner that Monday night. At the Um, Emmys? Yes. So it all started. He's at the Emmys and, you know, he gets there. He's having a blast, whatever. He sends me a picture on the red carpet, looks so handsome. And then he's like, my stomach's killing me. And I'm like, oh, I'm sorry. But like for us, like you need to tell, oh, are you going to? Like, (laughs) mind you, like Matt is like the boy who cries wolf, I would say, like with his stomach. Especially about his tummy. And like that's coming from like me who like I always say my tummy hurts. (laughs) And like. But you don't make it like. No, not like it's not like deathly ill. Like right, I'm like, and I think if you all like follow Matt or you listen to his podcast or anything, like he's been manifesting getting his appendix removed for years. He has wanted it to happen, and so for me, when he's saying like, you know, I've been dating him almost three years, and I've heard like him thinking he's needing to get his appendix removed multiple times, um, and so I didn't believe him. I did not believe him. <laughs> like that Monday night, he was texting me constantly. He's like, okay, now I'm like. He's like, well, I'm so hungry. I haven't eaten all day. I just had a kind bar and some popcorn and a beer. And I'm like, yeah, well, no shit. Your stomach hurts. Like, that's like not good for your stomach to eat nothing and then have a kind bar, which is fiber fueled popcorn that always makes people's stomachs hurt and a beer that's just like going straight to your gut. (laughs) Um, And he was telling me he was like, yeah. So I was like laying in the hallway and I was like, oh, my God, you were at the Emmys. And you were laying down in the hallway. And, like, in the group chat, we're all, like, I'm calling him a little bitch and telling him to, like, <laughs> I'm, like, oh, your tummy hurts. Like, everything. <laughs> and, like, looking back at it now, of course, I feel god awful. But, but you know. like, he had it coming for him because he literally, like, felt like he, um, or literally would say constantly from, you know, years that he was, it was his appendix. Yeah. And so then he finally, he, like, left the Emmys and he goes to Mike's um, because he didn't have his car keys and his car was at a friend's house. And then he's like, well, Mike's going to sleep and Zane's not there. Todd's not there. So I don't know how to have a way to get in the house. I'm like, okay, I'll come pick you up. 
you know, his stomach's still not feeling well. And I'm like, okay, well, I've talked to my cousin. She's a doctor or a nurse. And she told me to press, like, I guess in the middle of your stomach or wherever. And if you scream, like, we need to go to the hospital. And he was like, no, I don't want you to do that because it'll hurt. And I'm like, okay, do you want this to be your appendix or not? Right. Also, shout out to all the nurses who, like, my mom's, like, fucking annoyed with me all the time because, I mean, she's not. She's such a sweetheart. <laughs> but because we text them these symptoms of, like, hey, am I dying? Yes. And so just wanted to give a little shout out to our nurses out yes. there. Yes, nurses, you're amazing. Um, and, you know, so we go to bed. He's fine. The next morning I had to drive him to his podcast. Um, like, that's crazy he was doing a podcast. Yes, he did, too. And... Even that night before, like, he went to bed, I was like, if your stomach is hurting this bad, we need to go to the hospital because if it is your appendix, like, it is a very serious thing. Like, and I'm a girl, just tired of hearing about yes, it. Yes, exactly. <laughs> like, if it hurts this badly for you to leave the Emmys, honestly, let's go to the hospital. He was like, no, no, I don't want to. I think it's fine. Next morning, I drop him off. He does his podcast. He was like, well, I went to the bathroom. Um, he pooped. Um, sorry. <laughs> and he was like, I think it feels a little bit better. I'm like, okay, that's good because if you... If it is your appendix, I, d- I think you can't really, or I don't, I don't really know. But it was I've a good. I thought my appendix was rupturing like four hundred thousand times, and I don't even know what that like feels like in the slightest. Yes. So. And so I'm like, okay, well that's good. <laughs> Whatever it is, it's good if you can go to the bathroom, I guess. Um, and then you know it, it, he was doing like his good influence podcast, and then after he was going over to Aaron, Aaron and Carly's and doing like an Emmys fashion review, mm-hmm. and I guess Aaron is also kind of like Matt, like very. I feel like they're not hypochondriacs. So they're just overly cautious about their, their health. health. Yeah, that's good that, way like, to put it. Yeah, and which thing, I'm a hypochondriac. Like, I, there's yes. like nothing wrong with me, and I'm like, I need to go to the ER like immediately, right. or you need to go to jail. So. Yeah, like they're kind of like at the point of like in jail also <laughs> as well, and I'm just hungover. But they have like a like a little bit of reasoning behind it because I feel like they can kind of like look up WebMD and like kind of understand. Okay, I'm feeling some of this. I'm like, I will convince myself. That I have every symptom listed. Right. So. Right. So, like, they're very overly cautious, sometimes to a fault, but sometimes not. Right. Um, may, I'm mainly talking about Matt, but anyways, so they take him to the hospital, and he gets there, or they take him to urgent care, and then they couldn't take him, so he goes to the ER, and, you know, he calls me, and I'm on my way to Century City to buy a new dress for the Auburn game. <laughs> you know, I'm, like, not a care in the world. Weekend He's like, plans. <laughs> you know, we're going to Alabama the next day. And he was like, uh, he called me and he was like, well, it's going to be a two hour wait. Like Aaron and Carly stayed with me for like an hour. Do you want to come wait with me? And I was like, well, it's going to take me an hour to get there and I got to get a dress for the weekend. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Meanwhile, we, we obviously that doesn't even happen. And then like this whole time, we didn't know if the Don't Worry Darling screening was going to happen. Right. So around this time, we did get a text from Brittany Broski saying, can y'all come watch the movie at 645? We're like, yeah, absolutely. Of course, I will drop everything. So I'm like, well, at that movie. point, I'm like, well, thank God I didn't go to the hospital. <laughs> right. Um, so, you know, I get back to the house. We go to the movie theater theater halfway through. I get Mike goes up there. Mike texts me. It's appendicitis. He's having surgery in like four hours. And I'm like. You've got to be kidding me. <laughs> it's fucking crazy. And this is like while we're sitting down at the movie, right? right. Like, and this is like the second half of the film where it's, you you want to watch it. And I'm like, yeah. at this point, I'm like, I don't want to have to go. I mean, I'm <laughs> definitely going to want to see it again, but like, right. I'm watching this for free. Yeah. Um, And so he texts me and then he's like, okay, well, or Mike tells me, okay, can you bring him short sleeve shirts, long sleeve shirts, sweatpants, shorts, his long socks, his headphones, <laughs> his book, American Psycho, his charger for his iPad, his iPad. Um, I just know Matt was making a list also. Yes. Like, and I'm like, him out to Mike. I'm also like, wait, how long is this going to like, are we going to be there like a week? Like right, we're supposed to wait, go to Albion like, like tomorrow. What? <laughs> so then at that point, you know, I had to sprint out of the theater once the movie was done and on my way to Matt's house, I passed our house. So I'm in blue jeans. I'm not going to be in the hospital wearing blue jeans. So I run and get sweatpants. Matt texts me. He's like, you're at your own house. And I'm like, yeah, I'm getting sweatpants. I'm, not, I'm like, what? And he's <laughs> <It's> like. <very> <laughs> sh- <laughs> Matt's like laying in the hospital bed. Just like, I have to change my outfit. Jesus. <laughs> those, man, those jeans were tight. I'm yeah, not going to say. Like, and so then, like, I ran up to his house, his house. I already told him I won't be there until 1030. They told me that's fine. And then I get a call from him. He's frantic. He's like, well, I mean, they're they're saying surgery is going to start in an hour. Like, and I just want to see you. And I'm like, OK, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm li- you're stressing me out. You told me 1030 was fine. You all said it was four hours. And that means surgery wouldn't have started until midnight. And so y'all you should have told me to leave the movie, blah, blah, blah. 
Turns out I get there on time. I thought you were about to start crying. I got really scared. I was like, oh, God. oh I almost started crying that night because I was like, oh, my yeah, gosh. that night was understandable. Like, oh, and then I, I get like, stuck in an elevator. Oh, at the theater? No. I mean, at, sorry, the, at hospital. the hospital. Um, not really stuck. It just wasn't moving. And after about three minutes, I finally got out. And then I'm sprinting into the ER and I'm sprinting in. And there goes Matt. I see him. He's just high as balls and just is like, hey. <laughs> Okay, so then I get to the hospital. You know, he's, like I said, he's high. And Mike kind of gives me the rundown. It's going to be like a laparoscopic. So it's going to be like an outpatient surgery, which is what you taught me. Um, <laughs> and I, Those are the only things I know. The outpatient and the inpatient. Right. I know like one is a little bit easier than the other. And the outpatient, like, or the inpatient, inpatient you're, you're have to be yes. there for a second. Yes. And so luckily with laparoscopic, laparoscopic, <laughs> laparoscopic <laughs> and Mike was like, the surgery will happen in about an hour. And I'm like, great. And he's like, the surgery Since will happen. Mike become a doctor. He's really good at retaining information. Yes, he is. Um, and he's like, the surgery will last about like under an hour, blah, blah, blah. You should be out of here by one or two. Matt ate about three chips um, at like four o'clock in the afternoon and surgery couldn't happen until about 3.30 a.m. Because of that. Yeah. Uh-huh. So That's crazy. Yeah. So me and Matt, are, I'm sitting in the most uncomfortable chair I've ever sat in my entire life. Okay. Sorry. I'm not trying to complain. I'm, I realize that my boyfriend's <laughs> over there about to have to get surgery. <laughs> He's going under the knife. He's going under well. the knife and I'm sitting in an uncomfortable chair. I didn't sleep at all. Finally, they take him back to surgery. Goes great. At this point, all I had to eat was a little bit of popcorn at the movie. And while he's in surgery, I'm like, I got to go to McDonald's. So I go to McDonald's and they call me and they're like, okay, he's good. You can come back. Blah, blah, blah. I'm like, okay, great. We stay there for another three more hours. Um, yeah, it was quite, we obviously didn't go to Alabama, canceled those flights, it, which kind of sucks because my little brother was in town. Matt's aunt and uncle were, gonna, were at the Penn State game. Um, we just had lots of fun plans and it it's is what it is. It's honestly probably the best that you missed the Penn State game. Yeah, the Penn State game was so bad. So I'm like, thank you, Matt. <laughs> and Matt's doing better. He has a gnarly bruise on his belly button. Oh, I saw like, on his Snapchat. He's been getting more into Snapchat lately. Yes, because apparently you can make like, like Zane and Todd are also in, like they're making so much money on Snapchat. Snapchat influencers. Like they I know, can. I want to be that. They can make like a crazy amount that I don't even remember what Matt told me, but like. You could it could turn into like Snapchat has a lot of money now yes. randomly. It's kind of crazy. Yeah, I was so doing some research on yeah, it. Yeah, like so wild. we should we should get into that. Well, I used to post on my Snapchat story like it was my Instagram story, and now I post on my Instagram story like, like I post like it's my Snapchat story. So. Well, let's go. Let's just flip that around. And <laughs> I know, but I think only like a thousand people followed me on Snapchat, yes, and they have like a hundred thousand subscri- plus subscribers. Yeah. So, so like I don't really know if I want to give my Snapchat like I don't I I didn't put my B real out there because there's like some things that I just want like like B real like. I well, just it's want like it to it's be like my a, friends. well, it's your sub. You can have like a subscription Snapchat as well as your like with Patricia. One. Listen to yourself. You know that me like out. I will not remember. Oh, let me go put that on my subscription only. Well, you could one. put them. You could put them on both. <laughs> They're gonna always be on my public story for everyone to see. And when you search like snap, like Snapchats scare me. So and it's so well, y'all closely. can add me on Snapchat. My Snapchat's Patty Flack. I'll consider letting people add me on Snapchat. Well, I'm not going to add you back, but you can add me. <laughs> wow. Um, Sorry, that was really rude. <laughs> also, while all that was happening, um, Don't Worry Darling was amazing. But do we want to talk about that? Or we can talk well, about it. Where are you going with first? I was just going to talk about like also the queen like shit that was happening. Yes. Because we didn't do an episode last week. So like we haven't even talked about anything. Like, you and I were both related. up around the same time that morning and all of a sudden... You send something about like what happens when sh- the queen dies. It was a video from like four years ago. Such an interesting video, by the way. If you haven't seen it, it's like a uh, uh, London Bridge is falling down. Like when the queen or king passes away. This one was for the queen, obviously, but it was made like so long ago. But it shows you the entire timeline of like eleven days or like fourteen days following the death, and yeah. it is like there's so much shit that happens. And obviously, I knew it was a big deal, but this was like. Well, she's like the longest reigning monarch. Er, and like, er, honestly, like, too fucking long. Like, I'm sure the queen is like. Yeah, but you know what's sad? Like, we will never see another queen in our lifetime. Maybe. No, we won't. It's, I guess it's we would Charles have to. and then it's William and then it goes to George. Would it not go to Charlotte? No, because George is the firstborn. Rats. I want to see Charlotte. She as would a be queen. a I want, awesome queen. She really would be. She was like really just like bebopping around everywhere. And she's like, you know, snapping at George being like. And Kate, I know Kate's not in the, is like a married in, right. like royal, but she would be a great queen as oh, well. Oh, yeah. 
Um, I don't know. I think the whole royal situation is so. I've always said I think I'd be a good like first uh, like a White House president's son. Mm-hmm. Um, but I also think that I'd be a really good royal, and that's only from the knowledge that I have of watching the royals that the, show. Did we ever talk about how? effed up it is that they canceled the royals no i don't think we did and we, we need to really start a campaign to get that back yes it was it's the perfect amount everyone's attractive it's the perfect amount of like debauchery Drama and like cheesiness but yeah. also like it it's, is it was the best show i wa- I, ha- I bought it on itunes and i've like watched it so many times that's crazy it's such a good it's great great content but I think my perception of like everyone else watches like um, the crown, the crown. <laughs> I watch the, <laughs> the royal, royal so. so they're like all going out and like clubbing and doing like you know yeah. other <laughs> things that they shouldn't be doing. Right. But I think that's like a good representation of like an actual like if someone was like kind of found out that they were in the royal family and then like oh fuck or you know they've been I yeah I'd but be like oh royal. wait I'm always I was always supposed to be like I was never supposed to be the king and then my brother died so now I'm gonna be the king yeah um. But yeah, no, it's kind of crazy. It's very sad. R.I.P. to the queen. Um, it's crazy that she became queen at 25 years of uh, age. Just, like, it's so, too long for anyone to have that much power. Well, I do know that she uh, like stepped back on a lot of her duties in the past That's few good. years. Well, like, like, can you not just get to a point where you like, I don't you know. You just want to retire? Yeah. Like, I don't know how the queenie shit works, but like, the queenie? I, would, I would assume, yeah, like Madame Queenie, like, I don't know how all that works, but I would assume like you'd be like, hey, I'm like fucking tired or hey, like. Hey, I'm, I'm 96 years yeah, old. Babe, I would I'm like to just like. Even at like 85, can I take like a maybe PTO for like two weeks? Like at, at 75. Does the queen have 60, PTO? She's the queen. I would hope so, but she hasn't taken it and she never got to take it. Have so. you seen like all of the like handbag like things that she does? Like if she wants. Oh, the handbag movements. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Which, like, what do they mean? If she's on, if the bag's on the floor, she wants to be removed from the situation immediately. If the bag's on the chair, she's okay in the conversation and if it's in her hand she's it's like a left and right hand switch yeah. like she's ready to move on to yeah. from the conversation yeah that's a good system it is i don't we should start using that yeah like i've been wearing bags more but i think i need to just for that sole purpose yeah, yeah. um but it was crazy now we have king or they have king charles we don't it's like it's really wild and all the that um um Meghan Markle. Do you like Meghan there. Markle? Can yeah. We talk about this? I, well, and I liked her just like in general. I just don't see like the everything that went down with her joining the royal family was just like so fucked up. And like, I really think that she's just like, you know, like with everything they said of like having her blood mixed in with the royal blood would like make it. It was just very like underlying racist like stuff. Were you reading like the Daily Mail or what? I don't know. This has just been like a yeah. ongoing I'm thing. like 50 50 on Meghan Markle. I don't. I think her because her Oprah interview was so unnecessary. Her, her podcast is unnecessary. I think um, a lot of the things were like kind of blown out of proportion. Um, I don't know. Yeah, I'm, I'm very fifty fifty on her. I think I I loved her at the beginning, and then all of a sudden it was like she was like, oh, I had no idea who the or who the who Prince Harry was, but then she totally knew who he was and acted like she didn't. I don't know. I'm. Yeah, I think I'm. The idea of not, like, I get, I don't really know how it all For me, I'm like, if you want out of it, stay out of it and don't go on Oprah and try to get yourself right back <laughs> into it. Like, if you want out, get out. That's what you're trying to do. Well, I That's just think I of like. myself in, like, the royal family and I think of having to leave my family and, like, you're doing shoes off moment. Yes. <laughs> um, I just think of having to, like, leave my family and, like, not have, like, it just seems like there's such a separation between um, Harry and like the family so it's just weird i just couldn't imagine wanting to do that but then again i haven't been in the royal family what are you so saying you're, sure. you don't understand why harry left or why megan left her family no why they left the royal family i mean right. i understand like why he did it for him but like i just couldn't it would just be so hard to do and then for them to be like you know, and then they're mean. mad if their kids don't get the titles and i'm like well you left right it's so you, you made that decision for i don't know so Anyways. It's a whole thing. I mean, I'm proud of them. They live in Los Angeles. They seem to be doing just great things for themselves. So we'll all uh, Yeah. Like that. I said, I'm 50-50. Don't really have that big of an opinion on her, but. Great. I think where there's smoke, there's fire. And I think there's smoke and fire on both sides. Shit. Okay. So now I guess we should get to the number one topic of all, the Don't Worry Darling movie. Enough Queenie for today. We will give everyone what they need to hear about this because 
number one, I, I can't stand Rotten Tomatoes. They have put a rotten taste in everyone's mouth over this movie, and I can't have it anymore. I'm really done. Well, and, like, the thing is, to the critics' defense, I do see where they were coming with, like, the stuff, but it put a, such a bad taste in, like, the film, like, is a ve- I loved it. Yeah. But, like, I think some of the things, like, some there wasn't really good character development in some of the characters. It was... Some of the parts were dragged, like they dragged it on too long. So they were critiquing, like I think the way the film was made. Yeah, not exactly. Well, we need a separation of like church right. and state. There, we need like you know people who review things for like, and I'm sure there are. Like, if I'm Letterbox has some pretty good ones, and then also but IMDb even then, has. They're still like. Well, and I feel like IMDb is more of like a. Um, viewers review yeah opposed to like that's the one i would prefer rather than like uh i don't want like a critics basing it off like because for the untrained eye aka me and like a majority uh, yeah. of people who see it it's like very visually beautiful like it's such a pretty movie it's like a very it feels enticing. like a movie it does let me just say for all those people who fucking said that hey, we're making fun of harry styles for saying it feels like a movie like when you're going to the movies it literally feels like a movie. Like, it feels like you want to see it in the theater. Like, yeah, I knew exactly what he was talking about. Yes. I'm the so music, the, the clothes, the imagery, like you said, the, the cine- actors, cinematography. Like, yeah. Um, everyone was beautiful. The sets. Like, like, it's great. It's very much Black Mirror vibes. Like, yes. it was, I saw someone say it was like White Mirror, saying it was like not as, um, like, it just kind of like basic, but like, I, it really did feel like a Black Mirror esque kind of right, vibe, right? For the whole movie. I, I mean, I loved it. Um, Harry Styles did give me the ick, um, and you will understand why when you see the film. That was a crazy. Um, we were all really so we were in a. We got to go to a private screening, and it was like there was literally eight of eight us. of us in a huge theater. <laughs> and we're, so we're all able to like. We were all on board with like screaming, giving our full reactions. And we were like, all, at the end. We were all standing up, screaming at the like screen. Like I was having to pace around, and it's not often that like typically I like to stay seated, you know, in my seat. And Una- unfortunately, I was not able to do that due to my body like coming out like, of itself. Like thank God we were in a theater with no one else in there because that's what I think about. So our like our girlfriends who went to the Don't Worry Darling premiere in New York with like. Harry Styles, Nick Kroll, Olivia Wilde, Florence Pugh, like Sydney all those Chandler, girls. Sydney Chandler, like Florence wasn't there though. Oh, she wasn't. Neither was Chris Pine. Like, could you imagine that? Like, there's no way I could. Like, I want to be able to scream. I would have had to have screamed. Like in the like, so I'm very thankful. But I mean, obviously, that's a great opportunity to get to go and right. You know, be, be at an after cast. party with them, like insane. Yeah. Um, but without giving anything away go see it it's really really good um very suspenseful very like thriller kind of like dystopian the um scoring was so good what does that mean the music oh yeah (laughs) it was very good and like at the end it was like we were all like pacing it was i really really enjoyed it yeah so i i think like you know don't believe everything you see on rotten tomatoes it's not of course, like, I'm sure they have some valid points for, like, people who have been in the industry for, like, God knows Yeah, absolutely. But that's not, like, a great depiction of the movie. I want to start, like, a thing where people talk like we talk. Like, a, a, a movie review where people talk like we talk. Like, holy shit, this was a great part because, like, X, Y, Z. Yeah. The music was absolutely stunning. I loved this song. Like, like I need, like, those little elements. I really don't care about, like, the right. theatrical terms. I'm interested for Matt to see it because I feel like he will. Oh, that's going to be, yeah. I think he will know what the twist is going to be in, like, 30 minutes. Yeah. Everyone saying they knew what the twist was going to be. That was a lot of the things on the reviews. Also, I guess we could but we'll put a spoiler thing at the beginning. That we're not spoiling anything. But for everyone who was saying, like, they knew what the twist was going to be, like, I had not a damn clue Me either. of the direction it went. Like, obviously, you know that there's going to have to be something that happens or else the movie's just, like, you know, their lifestyle. But, like... But I think we were both, like, so invested in the movie that, like, we weren't going to try to figure out what the twist was going to be without just letting it unravel and letting it happen on its own. Yeah. Maybe? No, I I think so, too. Like, I... I was fucking shook, to put it lightly. Yeah, me too. (laughs) Me too. I'm not going to sit here and act like I would have... Like, I had no idea that twist was coming. And I do know a lot of people will know, but, like, me? Mm Mm-mm. Well, ten out of ten for me. It comes out on Friday, I think. We're going. I'm going to see it again on Thursday. Mm-hmm. Which I guess now that you're here, if you want to go see it again, I have um, an event 
and then right. I leave at 5.15 on Friday That's morning. nuts. I'm going to be, this is my big weekend alone in LA. I'm kind of really scared. It's not really like alone, but everyone on like my street is going to be gone. It's like Patrick, Alexa, Patricia, Matt's like, you know, damn near going to be glued to his bed until 2023. <laughs> so I'm going to be just kind of like here on the street alone. But I have challenged myself to go to Equinox because, like, as you know, I've been, like, really bad about using my membership. I am going to go to Equinox every single day for the next seven days. And I'm really going to – I'm doing, like, 30 to 45 minutes worth of, like, working out just for, like – I don't know. It just has been making me feel good. Like, today when I went, I felt, like, It gives really you so much great. energy for the rest of the day. Yeah. I mean, like, I definitely still need my afternoon naps. Like, I had to take one today because, like, I wake up for work and then I was, like – I just went to the gym on my lunch break and it ended up being really nice. So I'm going to make your nap a lot more satisfying Uh, once you did a little work. Yeah. Well, and now I feel like I do have energy because normally I wake up from a nap and I feel like, like, yeah, I feel like sluggy. Um, and not change. Well, try kind of changing the subject. We want to, um, Give a big congratulations to Tristan for making it one whole year in L.A. Yeah. His his one year anniversary was September 19th, which was mm-hmm. also my mom's birthday. So happy birthday, Mary. Oh, shit, Mary. I'm so sorry I did not text you. I feel God Tristan. awful. Tristan. Mary, happy birthday. I love you, like, to absolute end of the earth. Like, I think you were just, like, such a sweet, precious young lady. I just could not say enough good words about you. This young lady you have raised, she is... Yeah, she's crazy as hell, okay? But you know what? We love her. So, uh, happy birthday, Mary. Happy birthday. And happy birthday to my mom. It was September 8th, but we didn't do a podcast. Becky. Happy birthday, <laughs> Becky. You Becky. were just the best, and I didn't text you on your birthday. I'm so Patricia! <laughs> oh. I didn't know. <laughs> uh, well, Well, Becky. I want to say happy birthday, Miss Becky. You're the best host. You're so kind, and I need you to come visit LA very, very soon. Um, you're the best, and you're the most beautiful person ever, and you've raised... One heck of a son. <laughs> One crazy little bitch. <laughs> well, I love you, Becky. We as love well. you both. And happy birthday. Happy birthday to the Grits to Glam mothers. Yes. I feel like we both have gone awful, but at least we're in it together. <laughs> yes. Um, and happy anniversary to Tristan. We yeah. have made it one whole year together. I can't believe I've like a year. And he still doesn't know how to put dishes in the dishwasher. <laughs> I have gotten a little better at that. The signage really helps. We need to show you all the signage system we have. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but I'm not good at that. I've, I've never promised to be. I've never said I was. What's the Bryce Hall thing? I've never said I was a rapper. I never told anyone I was. It's funny. Or a fighter. Fighter. Yes. Um, mm-hmm. But a year in L.A. feels just like kind of nuts to me so I've made it one year in LA and it's kind of crazy like in a sense it's flown by but it's also like it feels like I've been here for a while like in terms of like the friends I've made what we've done like all the like I think back to everything that we've done in the past year and like the people that we've met it's like it feels it makes me sick to think about because I feel like the year, like you just get do so much in a year. Whereas like if I was somewhere else, I feel like, you know, it would have taken me like <laughs> two or three years to probably do the same thing. Right. And I do feel like because like we were, you moved here, what, 2021? Mm-hmm. Um, September. And it was like right after COVID or like things were opening up. And I feel like everyone was just like w- wanting to go balls to the wall and like, mm-hmm. just like, you it was know. a perfect time. Yes. Um, what do you want to say like your your favorite thing your three favorite things or do you want me to say my f- favorite things about you living here um either one i guess i can like give some were we not recording no, you oh. <laughs> um i think um okay i would like summarize it okay so my first one would be my friends i love that we have such a fun group of friends who do all different things whether it's like I have a good mix of like people who do nine to five. So they like know like the kind of like lifestyle it is like having to and like working from home and doing that whole thing, but also like fun friends who like do events and like we get to be their plus ones to everything. And also just the balance that they give me where it's like, you know, we can laugh and have like nights home and watch movies and just like, like talk and play games and have knitting club and doing all those things. But also, like, people who love to, like, you know, go out when I, like, make them go out and um, really just, like, move a full force, you know, energy into that. I think we can really have some fun times, like, with parties and events and memories and such and just, like, causing, you know. Mayhem. Yeah. I feel like we've definitely brought 
our like friend group has definitely brought some mayhem into LA, which mm-hmm. I really like. Like everywhere we go, like it's kind of oh, like it's, everyone knows. The it's large all. group like speaks for themselves of like you know. Yeah, I think with you moving in, like number one, thank you for moving in. Of course, I don't need to really elaborate on, right on that because <laughs> no one really knows. I had a very interesting situation before. Um, Tristan kind of saved me. I will just <laughs> will just say that Whew. because I don't want to talk poorly of anybody. Um, number two, I feel like a lot of the friends like they were. I also knew like them, and I hung out with them a few times like before you even came here. But I don't think we would have this friend friend group if it wasn't for you and mm, forcing right. them to be our friends or just making them hang out with us yeah um and number three um i can just sit there and talk with you or not talk with you so it's been great (laughs) yeah i agree it's been great yeah so it's been a fun 365 days that's fucking crazy that's like wild and it's like only just the beginning i know right that's like it just to think about like what the next like five years will be like it, i just can't even imagine right like and also i know we've probably touched on this a lot before but to like for tristan like i basically had to force him kind of i mean obviously it was ultimately like, ultimately his own decision but i'm like tristan imagine if you didn't actually move here like yeah it would, it would make me sick because it is a scary thing to do but it's like i don't know it's been a great year yeah now we're sitting on the set of grits to glam and who would have thought we started we a podcast together yeah that's like crazy what? yeah grits to glam all because we're roommates <laughs> all because of the glam and the grits yep um i think number two for me would be the weather i cannot stress enough how living in a place with good weather number one helps your like mentality your everyday life like walking outside not having to sweat for a majority of the time you know, like obviously we have the heat wave and right. like when we had no air conditioning, that was God awful. I wanted to just end it all. Um, but it's just like every day, like really feels beautiful. And like the scenery, there's just like nothing like you it. don't really take it for granted. Like even though, yeah, no, the wor- weather is perfect every single day. But like you really I feel like you just you are excited that it's a beautiful day every day. Yeah. And like, it's like not humid and it's not like wet when you go outside. Yeah. Um, and then I don't know. Number three. Um, I love like how excited it makes me to live in a city like this. Like, yeah. I think one thing that I think a lot of people when they move to cities like this, they forget about like all the cool things that you can do and like the access that you have here. Like, I love how and I think it really like when my family or my friends come into town is when I really remember it because I'm like, like doing all the like touristy things or like taking them to new areas like that we don't even like go to all the time. Right. But like, I try to just not forget that there's so much, like the, it, the opportunities are endless, yeah. like of like what you can do here. Yeah. So it's a great place to live. Kind of crazy. I, I think, should. yeah, everyone, <laughs> everyone should, everyone move, should here. move here. <laughs> Kidding. We got really lucky with where we live. So it's a pretty expensive yeah. place. Well, um, I was thinking about like our place is like, but like, yeah, I was thinking about like in the next, like, three to five years of like what our life is going to look like. Like when I was just reflecting on my um, like one year in LA and it's like kind of weird. Like you'll probably be like moved in with a special someone and like, what am I going to do? Like I'll be like literally either in y'all's like baby nook or like your, our baby, our nursery, our nursery or like, it is just like crazy to think about. Like it's such far way away, but it's like, I don't know. It's like time moves so fast, but mm-hmm. also like get so much done. So it's like, yeah, it's great <laughs> place. Yeah, it's Loved kinda... having you here at Tristan. Yeah. I've been really very happy to be here. Good. Is there a cake coming out or something? No. Okay. Alexa, did you get balloons or anything? No. Okay. So, um, My gift is. Okay, another thing. <laughs> Everyone's like, um, I asked Alexa like what she got me for my like one year like present. We went shopping to Target when I did a whole like rebroom design yesterday, mm-hmm. just for my bed sheets and everything. I needed new sheets, and I was like, "Where's my one year present?" And she's like, "Where's my two year present?" I'm like, "You don't get a present for two years in this city. You get one for one." And then I said the same thing to Patrick. He said, "Where's my three year present?" I'm like, "You don't fucking get a present for Where's being my here for four and three a half years. year present." Exactly. Like, guys, it's one year, okay? Like, that's yeah, like I've, the thing. I've survived four and a half years. You've only survived one. Okay. Well, it's gonna be like your fifth. Like on your fifth year, I'll get you something. <laughs> but okay. so I think it's like those monumental. I don't need anything. So like your first year in LA, your fifth year in LA. I don't need your anything because I'm not getting LA, you anything. And then. 
you have your cousins and then your first cousin. Do you have like your first? <laughs> um, but yeah, that's all I had to say. I love LA. I'm really happy to be here. I miss my Atlanta people. I miss the South, but like, they, you always find your way back home. Absolutely. And they'll find their way. And we have so many friends from the South, so. Yeah. And they'll find their way here if they, if they need to, yeah. which they should. Yes. Yes. Well, guys, we um, were kind of unprofessional and we did not charge our camera battery long enough. So we are going to have to wrap <laughs> this thing up real quick now. Well, we had the lighting and like, I feel like that was our big thing yeah. for this week. And so obviously the, we didn't think about the charging, like, cause these podcast batteries died, <laughs> camera battery died, like everything <laughs> around us but shambles but we showed up and we smiled okay and we've had a fun episode and we've hoped you enjoyed it as well oh and, my god um alexa wants us to do a review of a new restaurant in our neighborhood called melrose place we went friday night it was really cute really cute the views are amazing uh-huh you have anything particular on your mind i mean it was expensive but it was a really cute spot and I it's fun that it's like so close to us you have a reservation right Okay, I'm going to say the two of our other friends tried to meet us up there. Like, we didn't have a reservation because we were just going for cocktails. And I called ahead and I was like, hey, can we go? Then our two other friends, like, well, first of all, he calls, like, the bouncer out front, calls a little scene, acting like I didn't, like. Well, our friend, Corny, she was, re- the hostess recognized her. My and ex-wife, we, average fashion blogger. Yes, and they gave her a really good table and we were, she got there before us. So and then they just like tried to like make it seem so exclusive. I'm like, babe, this restaurant's brand new. It's right by our house. First of all, you should be treating me like a friend, a neighbor, a family member. Mm -hmm. And you're treating me like I'm not wanted here. And it wasn't even packed up there. Yeah. But then once we got in, the French fries were really good. Espresso martini. Great. Cosmo. Great. Um, Prices a lot. Um, but like the view is beautiful the atmosphere the vibes it's like what you would expect from an la rooftop place so good but expensive yes so um that's all i think we have today make sure to comment below if you're watching on youtube if you're not like join the party we're having so much fun over here um rate review subscribe on spotify apple everything please leave reviews we love when y'all do that we do and share grits to glam like when y'all are watching it on your tvs like we want to see what we look like on the big screen so like share us tag us yeah everything quite to the contrary belief we do not watch or listen to our podcast i can't i hate listening to myself the only time i listen is when we get the clips back from christian who's our tiktok editor great job by the way everyone we love you say you love christian on our next tiktok um but yeah well, thank you guys. <laughs> yes. We'll see you next week. And hopefully next week we'll have an update on the hats, but they're going to be really cute. Um, yeah. But I'll choo. love you guys. Love Bye. Bye. It's the Brits. It's the glam. It's the Brits.